Welcome back, everyone, to more Zero K Expedition matches. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have another match with Golda and another match with Dregs, but now against each other. We're on Prestige! One of the brand new maps. Neat little arena map has water around the outside. That is actually useful water. And Dregs taking advantage of it with the Ant Blood Factory. Golda, on the other hand, going for the Spider Factory up on the cliff. Now, bear in mind that cliff is perfectly accessible by normal bots. Because that's... This map is set up in a way that, honestly, I think is very clever as far as making sure that units can kind of go everywhere. Because, like, anyone can go up here and then go around the back and then harass from the side. And it's kind of cool. I mean, spiders, of course, can do it a bit better, but this map does not restrict other factory, other bot factories from doing that. So, anyway, wait. Go to standard start with the fleas, going out to scout out. Dregs, on the other hand, going with the start for the Archer. Kind of makes sense. Archers are ludicrously strong in the current version. So using them... Yeah, I could totally see it. I'd use them too. I'd use them all the time. They're great. Anyway, Dregs coming in here with... Well, they've got the Commander up front. That's the same thing as Golda. Both players going in trying to build frontline forces commander as you do it's not really unusual Golda is doing it faster though and unlike the last time they are actually building or the last replay we watched they are actually building energy so they're not going to be out in the hold and wind generators that are very valuable as well so yeah they are getting a solid amount of their energy infrastructure up we shouldn't see any e-stalling dregs same thing getting up tidal infrastructure less variant more reliable I mean, they're both roughly the same average, I think. I think Golda's average is going to be higher. Doing the math. Yeah, it'll be like 1.55-ish. As opposed to 1.2 for the title. On the other hand, Dregs knows exact A, exactly how much they're going to have. And B, it's in the water. Golda can't really do anything about it. It's in the water. Unless Golda were to set up air units or get Requises into the back of Dregs' base. That ain't going away. Those title, title generators are there. They are built. There's nothing stopping them. Also, nicely done timing on the car character for Dregs. Golda, I don't see anything for that. Oh, actually, no, I do. There's a Weaver on the bottom ground. Weaver on the low ground handling all that stuff, so they're doing all right. Huh. Didn't realize large crystals were worth so much. Oh, Sapphire Crystals on the side, too. That's why. That is what's worth so much as to have things go around the side. Yeah, this is Dregs taking interesting early advantage with the archers. But of course, fleas do get everywhere. As they do. As anyone who's ever owned an outdoor cat knows. <laughs> or a dog. Period. Please get everywhere. But Dregs, thankfully, does have a laser turret. And as we all, as all pet owners know, the best way to deal with fleas is to mount a laser turret inside your house. Burns off all the fleas. Also sets an example to the others. Anyhow, with Dregs coming in here, there's... Actually, call it... I mean, this is the thing with the spiders. Take advantage of the cliffs. Why not? Absolutely. Take all the cliffs. Though, admittedly, the redback isn't in the best position for this. I mean, they try to go down. The boys will stop them. Or the lotus. Oh, we saw... If we were to see thugs up there or recluses, it'd be a very different story. And actually, I'm a little surprised that Dregs hasn't walked a constructor up here just to try to set up any defenses on the top, especially over here. And Dregs knows this. They made this map. They know that they can do that. And there's no reason why Dregs wouldn't have that in mind as an option. I just think they're not, they don't care that much about this one expansion. What they really care about is making sure that they have a few defenses here and there, keeping it safe. Otherwise, just expand the rest of the map. 
We'll worry about the expansion later. We'll worry about the rest of the map right now. Not a bad choice overall. Like, really not a bad style. So I expect Dreg is going to have no problem just continuing with their... Oh, actually, never mind. Not quite economic dominance. Gorda has ultimately managed to take expansion over to the south one of the 2.5s. Dreg's trying to hold on to the one over to the north with enough static defenses they have managed to. And there they go. But this is very much a famine map, and it shows. I mean, both players have essentially carved out the map in half, and they have 50 metal between them. So yeah, very much, this is a low unit density map. A few units here and there. Throw them tactically where you need to. This is actually where Gorda will shine. And speaking of recluses, I was talking before. Yeah, there's the setup. Recluses on the top, no defenses to deal with them. I just do not understand why Dregs hasn't bothered to walk up there and, you know, build something. I'm not wrong, right? Like, they can actually do that. Yeah, they can do that. It's a bit slower walking up the hill, but it's not purple. They can do that. Oops. Well, that is going to be interesting for sure. I mean, Dregs... Well, they're trying. They're trying to set up defenses, they just didn't really do it in a way that makes sense. Given the map construction. Ooh. Same time though, they do have lobster in the middle of the lake. I, I think it might be too little too late and a bit of a gimmick at this point, but... Hey, it could be fun. See where that goes. I mean... On the other hand, Lobster throwing units up onto the ramp does mean they don't have to go up the ramp first. They can just get up there. So, an interesting choice. I, I'm i curious to see how it's going to pan out. Oh! Or just throw yourself over into getting rid of this defense area. Fortunately, the Lobsters can't really follow, but that's fine. Good takeout of that southern expansion. I'm... I'm not sure what else is going to happen. I mean, there's a Widow up here trying to get rid of Dregs' commander. But otherwise, Dregs and Golda are entirely focused on the section to the south. And there it goes! Exactly what I was talking about. Lobster onto the top ground, or onto the high ground. Golda's commander is basically dead? Is it dead? Maybe it's not dead. Wow, it actually... No, it's... Okay, it is dead. Like, wow, it actually survived that? Sheesh. Nope, it, it is dead. Same time, the Reckless is going over to the main base, where there's not really a whole lot here to defend. I mean, this No, not much. And actually, even the tidal generators I was talking about before are actually in trouble. Kind of unsurprisingly, considering that they... This is exactly what I was talking about. If you got units in the back lines, yeah, the tidal generators can only do so much. Fleas won't touch them. Recklesses absolutely will. Oof. Yeah, Golda taking full advantage of that terrain difference with spiders. I guess I can kind of see if Dregs ever said, well, I didn't bother to fight on the high ground because they could just use the size of the cliffs. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. This is a spider battleground. Like, this is exactly where a spider factory wants to fight. Whereas the Ampot factory wants to fight near the lake. My point was more, set up a few defenses on the high ground so that it's a bit harder for the spiders to go around freely, and then it will be a different story. Or, you know, maybe on the sea. In Amphbot, you could set up some defenses on the sea. Or go into the sea. Set up some offenses on the sea. Or just, you know, pincer across the entire thing. Some up top, some at the bottom. Stop the recklessness from escaping. Though, at this point, I don't know if it's going to matter, because Gota is really just oppressive on all fronts. And there's not a whole lot here that can really be done by Dregs besides taking out Gota's entire front line. Which is exactly what they're trying to do, which, okay, granted, they got rid of all but one Recluse. Nicely done. Good, good accuracy on the flying, that's for sure. The only problem, of course, is that... The recluse can just go on the side again, which, again, the easy solution is to have some units in the top, some units in the sea, and the recluse can't really deal with that. It's a bit of a weird situation, and probably really hard to think about when you're playing the game. Like, as a spectator, of course, I have no pressure, so I'm not worried about that, and there's a million other things I'm not paying attention to, like all the stuff going to the north, 
and the fact that you still have to deal with what am I going to build next? This one is just oh, lobster duck. Okay, interesting choice. I mean, you can see it because they are cheap, and they can kind of avoid all these units here. And well, fleas might actually work okay. Yeah, archers on the other hand are going to get rid of the fleas, no problem. And again, with the lobster jumps, I gotta say that is some really clever use of lobster. Basically, turning the ant bot factory into a jump bot factory. Uh, that is literally what's happening here. Is just, and I know I often say you know if walk in, jump out, but no, this is considering the speed of these units. That actually makes a lot of sense the way that Dregs is using him. So I can't say it's a bad choice because it is working. Unfortunately, though, Dregs did lose a lot of the frontline metal extractors, so they got to rebuild those. Which is exactly what the commander is up to. Also, a lot of reclaim too. Yeah, that's the thing about this is that we're going to be seeing reclaim possibly increase the overall metal income of the layers. Not really sure. Golda is trying to run away with this game. Uh, the spider factory and a plate. Well, the plate for fleas, spider factory for everything else. We got flea recluse just massing up here. Although flea is not really a good option against archers. I guess really not a good option against archers. The rate of fire is just too high for them to deal with. I mean, granted, I don't think there's splash. Let me double check. Oh, there is some splash. No, fleas are useless. Fleas are useful for scouting, but not going to be useful for actually fighting. And also that weaver goes down, so there's no way... Golda, although Golda is actually able to expand over the southwest. Like, Golda is able to take quite a bit of territory. Dreg's still working off of reclaim for the time being. Which is... Keeping them in the game, granted they also have a much more efficient attrition value, it's just that, is it going to matter if they end up losing a battle? Like, at this point, if Dregs loses any battle, they are done. And they've taken out some of the frontline metal extractors from Gota over the north, they've reclaimed some of their, or retaken some of their own. But Gota has three of the corners, still some of the front line, and of course, what, well, is Dregs' starting location. Golda, of course. They picked one of the other. I mean, this map, you have three starting locations. So you don't have to go in the center. Oof. And again, coming in here, Dregs. This is exactly what I was worried about. Dregs is losing quite a few boys. They are not able to really hold on to this fight. They're not able to hold on to the top line. And Redback is still... Okay, one wounded Redback. So Golda doesn't really have the top either that well. Granted. But that was a blow. Same time, Dreg's able to take out some of the northern expansions. But this is the big battle I was worried about. If Dreg's loses, they're done. There's the jump coming in. Going to the back line takes out some... Well, takes out a recluse, but that is all they're going to be able to take out. The fleas ripping the boys to shreds. Dreg's having lost their entire army. Don't really have a whole lot of options to deal with these recluses over to the south, getting rid of the metal extractors. Dreg's, do you have an army at all? If you do, I do not see... In fact, I... Do you have an army? Eh, not really, no. <laughs> have these units. Value 9... Well, okay, there's something else around. But yeah, basically those units. That That's about it. Just curious what the excess is. Oh, the excess is basically nothing. That's impressive. 30 minutes into the game, no excess. Well, Dreg's at least able to clean up a bit. And with this, they do have a thousand metal worth of reclaim. And since the center is basically about as evenly controlled as it can be, yeah, this is actually not a bad position for Dreg's to be in. All things considered, Dreg's is doing all right. I mean, they're still on the back foot. Golda still has a massive army advantage, and... Just has all the control and knows what's going on. And also, why not build a gunship plant? Though, that's actually... Actually, I have a good answer to that. 20 metal per second income. That's why. That gunship plant is quite risky. Dregs can basically rebuild their entire army while that gunship plant is being constructed. And of course, Dregs with all the reclaim is able to maintain an advantage. Oof. Lotus not able to do what it needs to do. Archer at least is able to come in here and show that fleas can't do much against an archer. 
But yeah, hopefully Dregs actually does start building up defenses on the top here because they need to. They absolutely have to. This, The fact that they didn't have defenses on the top here is entirely why they lost this Southwest expansion. Could have bought themselves some time going up here otherwise. Thankfully for them, they at least have the Archer up here. It's not completely defenseless as it was before. But it is mostly defenseless. Same time, though, Dregs is rebuilding their army. They do have another Archer-Boy combo set to jump. On the other hand, Gold is basically entirely fleas. They do have a gunship up. They have Nemesis coming up. Oh, are they trying to get rid of the the lobster? Or are they just going around the side and going for a backline assault? Well, we'll see shortly. Worth noting, Drex does have pretty complete knowledge of Gota's front line. Gota, on the other hand, doesn't really know what's going on in Dregs's base at all. Yeah, there's only a few blind spots for, for Dregs, so Dregs at least has the information advantage. Like, the one thing that Gota really has going for them is the fact that these units are effective on the parts of the map that the battles have been taking place on. But... Dregs is pretty much nullifying that advantage. Actually going for a pincer move. There we go. That's the need to do in the first place. Going for that pincer move. Jumping in. Taking advantage of, well, the speed lacking in spiders. Because like, can't, spiders can't really run away from it the same way that most other factories could. Fortunately, I don't have any anglers or anything yet. Oh, one's in the queue, but way far back. Oh, interesting choice. Jump in! Take out the Nimbus. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Kind of nullifies their range advantage. Unfortunately, it's just not enough. Nimbus is... Nimbus are very tough. And unfortunately, there weren't enough arches to deal with that. But you know, a valiant effort, nonetheless. Kind of pushed Golda back. Though, I, again, don't understand why not just, like, emergency build anglers. I have just the one, like, 35 units into the queue. Well, anyhow. Dregs at least does have some raises coming up. They, have, they do have anti-air defenses on the ready. It does kind of feel like Golda is playing very reactively. I mean, they have the Nemesis and such, but, you know, Dregs already has the units to deal with that. Like, Drex is playing a little bit, a little bit of reaction, but for the most part, they've been just kind of doing their own thing. They, I mean, they haven't really been reacting, for one thing, that dealt with the fighters over here very quickly. Like, Dregs just seems to have a plan they're going with, and a flexible enough unit composition that they can do that, whereas Gorda, I'm not sure what their ultimate plan here is. Especially if the archer is able to hit air units. It's, I'm not entirely certain what the idea of ultimately is going to be. I mean, clearly that's the reason why the angler was so far into the queue. I mean, adjusted since, but still. It's that Dregs just simply didn't feel the need to worry about it. Unless you get into large numbers of Nimbuses, which is exactly what's happening, and... Okay, I can see the possibility of making Dregs try to build a mixed army, but, like, Dregs... Dregs already has a strong enough army, and they weren't throwing it away, mind you, because Golda is now winning on attrition. Golda is now winning on attrition! Okay, Dregs is now running into some problems. The Anglers being up is... hopefully going to be enough to at least dissuade the use of Nimbuses, but that's, again, the point. Well, maybe. Actually, that's a lot of Nimbuses. That's not the point. The point isn't to force an anti-air switch. The point is to do a bunch of damage. Forcing an anti-air switch is more of a side benefit when, you can, when you've built that many Nimbuses. Well, at any rate, they've been routed. Hey, and it's the chainsaw on top of that. Hooray! Someone actually building sensible anti-air against a gunship heavy strategy. Now well, it's two Nemesis down, at the cost of a couple anglers, and a bunch of other army. Dreg's managing to maintain their attrition lead again, get back to their attrition lead. But again, it's still a fairly even game. Why is so frustrated? 
I mean, this game and the last replay we had with Guado were played within a day of each other. I don't know what Goda's problem is. It's like, yes, Goda, you're not necessarily always going to win every single game. There are a lot of really strong players in this game. I mean, unless it's just the quality of life features is only not quite working as expected. Because, of course, again, gunship strafe. I have it set on now, but that's not something that is necessarily on by default. It is now. It has been changed, but... I don't know if that's why. I mean, they're set to not strafe. Or maybe that's the pro oh, it wouldn't really help though. Not against, not against anglers. Or maybe it's just that spider factory. I don't know. Gold is not being specific. I'm thinking like spider factory on a flat map. Yeah, that's not really the best idea. But honestly, it worked really well. Maybe because archers are a thing. I mean, it's not like you can't deal with them with recklesses. They've been doing a fine job with the recklesses. I guess the lobster has been harder. But I would think Venom would have worked pretty well as a side, you know, side support unit with that army to make sure that any jumping from lobsters couldn't actually do much damage. You know, they jump in and deal a bit of damage, and then they all get stunned out. And then it's like, okay, well, that, that Venom did its job, and everything else gets torn to pieces. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe that's a bad idea. I'm not sure. And maybe I'm missing something at this level of play. It just doesn't seem li likely. Like the numbers don't change for higher skill players. Well, I mean, unless if you use Venom, that would be one or two fewer redbacks, and so they throw in ducks or something? I, I don't know. Also, not sure why the archers decided to go commit suicide, but that was a thing. That could actually turn the game entirely around again. Like, honestly, if one for Drake's throwing units away, they'd be way ahead. In terms of attrition, they were way ahead for a while. But they keep throwing archers away, trying desperately to get rid of these nimbuses, and it's just not working. And it's like, no shit, it's not working. The Nimbuses are actually quite strong. When you have five of them, that's, you know, 2,300 metal worth of Nimbuses. Even if it was, like, even for cost, you would need a dozen archers to equal the cost. So you don't have a dozen archers, and not to mention a dozen archers wouldn't really work. Nimbuses outrange them. So, yeah, that's not really a good set of options. Or maybe it's because the, ret no, the retreat is something you can set on your own. Gordon has clearly said that. That is not something that is default. Or at least not something you can't change. Oh, actually I'm pointing out that Venom will probably get blown up by Archers before we get into stun. That... That's a good question, actually. We can check the numbers for that. So Venom has a range of 240 Elmos. Archers have a range of... 255 Elmos. Yeah, on a... On a walk-in, yeah, the archers would probably win. On a jump-in, I think the Venoms would at least be able to do some damage first. And if it's a walk-in, Recluses are going to be covering, so the Venoms don't really need to do anything. The Venoms are just there more as a way of countering jump-ins. And I could see that being a way of, you know, countering the jump-in. But like I said, that is a specific need. You, need, like, you don't like one or two. Which might stun the group. Hard to say. But it is a fair point that, yeah, that archers would do... Actually, though, on the other hand, archers deal 155 damage per second, basically. Venoms have 750 health. Now it's still like five archer shots before the Venom dies. So no, there's plenty of time for the Venom to stun out that group. That's... That actually would... Ma the math at least works out that a ve two Venoms alongside these units would be a really effective deterrent to the jump-ins. Maybe three or four once you get this many arches you're fighting against. But, yeah. Two or three Venoms alongside Redbacks and Recluses 
would probably do a lot to make those lobster jumpins not be that effective. I mean, that's fair, I guess. Okay, look, actually, at this level of play, if you're not comfortable doing micro, then you're going to be running into trouble. Also, Gorda is really good at micro. So I don't think that's going to be a limitation for them. Granted, it sounds like, judging by their complaints, it sounds like something changed in the way the game's AI works that's been messing up their ability to do micro. But no, Gorda is really good at micro. Or at least the numbers bear out that Gorda is really good at keeping their army alive. So I don't think that would be too much to ask from them. Anyway, Drag's Commander goes down. Actually, that's a bigger deal than I'm making it out to be because I just realized, wait a sec, no, this is not a high value or high metal map. Drag's Commander going down is, that's, that's about like a fifth of their overall metal income. Losing their commander like that. That is actually big. Go to accessing a little bit. More just because of a lack of energy. The wind generator is in the low si end of the cycle. But, yeah, at the same time, Dreg's kind of in an awkward position right now. Not really sure what the plan is. I mean, they're just not engaging. <laughs> not engaging isn't a bad plan. Same time, though, the Nimbus is coming around the side, ripping apart Dregs' main base. Nothing really getting in the way of that either. More importantly, cover for Reckless is coming in to deal even more relevant damage. And there, there are the Reckless come in. The Stingers, once those are down, the Recklesses have nothing really stopping them. Same time, there is the push over to the side. Maybe lobstering it up. Looks likely, once all the archers get into range, I expect to see a lobster throw into this base. Only a few red black backs are here to stop it. But that might be the cost of Dreg's entire main base. There's the jump! Throws it in. Spider plate goes down. As do a few of the wind generators. Factor being the main target now, the lobster is just about recharged. So it should see another jump. Pretty soon. Actually, why is the show that's recharged? Well, it's dead now, so it doesn't really matter. Rags has managed to catch up, and unfortunately the lobster didn't manage to throw in time. So now it's about taking the long way, and the spiders will win in that engagement. So, Dregs forced to retreat. Able to defend their main base at least somewhat, but took a lot of damage in the meantime. At the same time, though... Cloaky Bot Factory being built over to the north side of the map, so Dregs is switching to Cloaky. Probably switching to Ronin. I mean, they're against spiders, it would make sense. Because Ronin are typically a very strong counter against Redback. Not so much Recluse, though. And there's a lot of Recluses. I'm not entirely sure what they're planning on building. Mass Glaive would be a bad idea. The Redbacks would rip it to pieces. Mass Reaver would be a bad idea. The Re Recluses would rip it to pieces. Mass Ronin would be okay. The Recluses would do damage, but it would be able to take care of a lot of the Redbacks. And the Archers can care take care of the Recluses. It is Mass Glaive, though, which, I, as I said, is not going to work because of all the Redbacks. Well, it's a bold strategy, that's for sure. I mean, maybe get enough of them and you just wipe out everything. Nothing really matters. Just walk in and they're done. I don't expect that to happen, but maybe that's what Dregs is thinking. If it happens, I, I guess it'd be a good, be more a matter of positioning than unit composition. Anyway, the Widow will be able to spot that out. Gorda will now know, yeah, it's Masklave coming in. They don't really need to change their composition any. Just continue up the red, red backs, and you're good to go. God, it looks to be trying to find some way of finishing off dregs. I'm a little surprised they're going up the way they are. I mean, bear in mind, they do have knowledge of what's over here. They know there is basically nothing in front of Dregs' base. And actually taking this ramp is harder for them than a straight shot into the base. And yet, they insist on taking the ramp in. I don't understand why, but 
that's what they're doing. And I guess that's one way of going about it. It's just, to me, it's a bit of a weird way of going about it. I, I do not understand the logic. Though, then again, the Grizzly is not going to do much against the Nimbuses. Please help, mainly the Nimbuses just tearing it to pieces. So that does still push it back. I mean, it's not providing a lot of room to maneuver, but it is at least providing a lot of damage folks in one area that is doing the job necessary to get rid of the Grizzly. Open things up. Open up Dregs' main base. And Dregs at the same time with some slings. Okay, that's that makes more sense as far as using the cloakies. Some slings setting up to get rid of the artil getting rid of ah, getting rid of the metal extractors. But it's too little too late. As I always say, if you the economy you need to get rid of the military before you get rid of the economy, otherwise it's not really worth it. To get rid of the economy, that means you get rid of the next wave of military. But Golda's economy is way too strong for that to be affected by a couple metal extractors in the front lines anyway. So there's really not a whole lot that's going to be lost here. I mean, okay. Some stuff. Three, seven metal per second in total. So not nothing. But... Dregs just lost their main base. They're losing the Northwest ex expansion. Probably going to lose a lot of their other expansions as well. Like, Dregs basically has nothing at this point. They have a harassment force. It's going around, tearing apart some of Golda's economy, but Golda's army is just bigger. And check the army value. Golda's army is four times the size of Dregs's. And, well, four times the value of Dregs's. Dregs is mostly... Light units like Glaives and Gota has three two thousand ish metal worth of Nimbuses. That does provide a bit of discrepancy, but those Nimbuses are massively relevant here. Like they're going to rip the Glaives to pieces. Case in point, there's not anything gonna, nothing's gonna happen to save them. And having lost the Ampod factory, they lose lobsters, and losing lobsters, of course, means that they can't easily jump up and get rid of the factory. Like if that lobster had managed to throw up at the spider factory. Dregs might have won by now. Just by preventing Golda from essentially building this entire army. And also, from there, would have been able to tear apart Gold's economy, and that would have massively changed the shape of the game. Like, Golda doesn't really have a whole lot else besides this cliffside. But that's about it. Dregs doesn't have a whole lot to build with here. I mean, able to come in with the Glaze to get rid of a couple of Redbacks. Sorry, Recluses. But the Redbacks, again, that's the problem. Ronan come in. Okay, again, the Ronan have been being built, so that's at least something. It does seem weird, the idea of switching to Cloaky late game. But then again, this is a very light metal map, so it kind of makes sense. Speaking of, though, Dreg's essentially down to less than 10 metal per second. They cannot fully build off of one factory, even. Let alone... No, keep up with Golda's production. Oh, Golda actually, Golda down as well. The rating has done effectively the same thing. Golda also down to the point they cannot maintain production of a single factory. So now it's all down to tactics. Now it's all down to unit positioning. And again, this is something that Golda has historically been a bit better at. And nutrition values do bear that out. But I think the biggest thing is that the Nimbuses are a thing that exist. Glade is able to do a significant amount of damage, surprisingly. But... Still losing a lot of the number in the process, and Gorda is rebuilding their economy far faster than Dregs is. Not to mention Dregs getting a bunch of stack defenses up as well. Gorda, on the other hand, basically just getting their army back up, getting their economy back up. While Dregs is desperately holding on to the army they have, and trying desperately to hold on to the last base they have. Which unfortunately means they're just ceding ground to Gorda, and ceding units, and ceding reclaim. Of course... Basically got 5,000 metal worth of reclaim all in one area that Gorda can easily grab. Or maybe not here. That's not, that's not Gorda's. Still, 3,000 metal of reclaim that Gorda can easily grab is a lot. Way more than I'm sure Dregs wants to give away, and that's the problem. It's not really up to Dregs at this point. That's really what it comes down to. Dregs is essentially seeded a lot of the game just because they're so concerned about losing their last factory they're not trying to push forward and actually take out what's been built certainly not trying to stop Golda from rebuilding their economy which is exactly what Golda is doing primarily off reclaim Dregs on the other hand do they even have 
Well, they are reclaiming a little bit now. But I mean, they have control over this reclaim field. And this reclaim field. So they have a lot of reclaim under... If you just take out the reclaim they actually have control over... Yeah, 1,500 metal. Pretty easily. So they aren't going to be in a position where they have to be focused too hard on getting static economy back, but the fact that they aren't even reclaiming very quickly is kind of surprising. They're just now setting up the reclaim. Gorda has been doing that for the last several, the last minute or so, the last minute or two. And that's just going to seal the game. Like, honestly, I feel like a lot of this came down to the fact that Dregs underestimated the power of these cliff sides. And Gorda was entirely operating off them. I think if Dregs had set up some static defenses early on here, at least just to buy some time in case spiders came along the sides, that would have helped a bunch. Also, you know, Drex has managed to jump in lobsters over into this area that would have completely torn apart Golda's main base, and, well, I think Drex would have had the game at that point. As it stands, though, Drex is essentially just trying to stave off the inevitable. Honestly, not doing a terrible job of it. I mean, they are, they are staving it off, if nothing else. It's just, there's a limitation to how long they can do that for. They only have so much metal to work with, they have to rebuild their army to keep some kind of pressure on the map. And, of course, they have to rebuild some of their metal extractors while reclaiming. Now, at least the reclaim is doing a decent job, but Gota just has more static economy and also has some really strong reclaim going on. So unless Dregs finds some super impressive force multiplier, like, you know, a few imps, they aren't going to be able to do a lot of damage here. Unless they build, you know, a few imps. A couple of imps would stun out this army, and then Glaives could rush in and tear it to pieces. It'd be tough to do, but then again, you Dregs has plenty of energy. They could just you area cloak on one of these. Where's the area cloak? There's yes, yeah, area cloak out. Is that the same key? Shit. Anyway, they could area cloak whatever they need to, and that would be that. Like, really not the biggest deal. Just area cloak out the unit. A couple of imps. Send them in. Stun out. I'm actually really surprised we haven't seen area conjure area cloak be used... Or, gremlin. My bad. We haven't seen conjure area cloak be used that often. And I find that very surprising, considering how effective area cloaked imps and snitches are. Well, imps more so, because snitches would be a double factor thing. But yeah, area cloaked imps. Really strong! Especially when you don't have outlaws you're fighting against or any other kind of, you know, periodic splash damage unit. Or any kind of splash damage, actually. This army has no splash damage whatsoever, except maybe a little bit off of the reckless rockets. I'm honestly surprised we haven't seen any, like, sneaky tricks like that. Like, I think Dregs is just trying to fit, do a straight-up fight, but Dregs is not at the economy for a straight-up fight. That's the thing. They simply do not have the metal needed to build the army needed to actually win this fight. Well, Gorda can just keep using the walls as a force multiplier for their own units. I mean, the slings aren't a bad choice to try to deal with that, but the slings can only do so much. Like, they can easily miss and go over, go too short. It's just not something that is that effective. Like, this is a massive disadvantage for Dregs. And now Gorda is in position to just tear everything apart. They've got the, they've, they're in range of the fusion reactor, they're in range of the factory. I think this game is over. The fusion reactor was the big thing. That'll blow up, that'll kill the factory, or that'll damage the factory. The factory itself is going to go down. And Dregs does not have a back to factory to build up this. And there goes factory, or fusion reactor down, factory soon to go down. Not much else remains for Dregs to hold on in this game. And honestly, I just, I really kind of wish we saw more tricky play coming out of this. I just would have loved to see a few imps used to completely whip, rip apart Golda's army, because again, Dregs needed to at least get one tricky victory. They are way behind economically. They cannot win in a straight up fight. To win one victory by just basically nullifying their opponent's army strength, and then from there, they can start getting some economy and then building up to more typical fights. Although even then, just the threat of cloaked imps being around the map is still something to be 
worried about. Fleas would be sent around everywhere. You could set up glaives around the map just to stop the fleas from getting around. That wastes a lot of gold as metal. I mean, yeah, fleas are 25 each, but you have enough of them. It's not nothing. No, it's a recluse here, right back there. But yeah, that is that is it. Drex throws in the towel at 40 minutes after the game and or 40 minutes after the game starts. Not really sure what Dregs is talking about there. Go to one with properties of terrain and a good understanding of your economy. It was absolutely legit. Dregs lost in part because they didn't understand the terrain, despite having crafted the terrain. A little surprising there, but it's not entirely surprising. I mean, there's a lot going on here, and it can be easy to forget that this is not decorative. I mean, in Zero-K, nothing is decorative. Just, like, as a rule, no terrain is decorative. It might look pretty, but it's all functional. But yeah, so, well done to Gota for abusing the terrain. For, well, for a strong use of the terrain. And that is that. I mean, really just came down to that. I thought there was some econ economic thing earlier, wasn't there? Uh, no, it was about the same. Nope, it really was just down to drags not defending against the incursion along the north, the southwest side, along the cliff side. That's what it came down to. Drags didn't account for that. Gorda took full advantage of that. That's how it goes. Anyway, so that is that. I'm. Oh yeah, it's Halloween. Okay, we're gonna have one more. Because it's Halloween. Alright, we're probably gonna see this map regardless. But because it's Halloween. Oh, this is on prestige. Ah, forgot to change that. But because it's Halloween, we're gonna have a match on Scary Land. And we're gonna be seeing Dregs again. But we're gonna see Mana 12 against Dregs. So Mana 12 versus Dregs on Scary Land, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.